GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast brought to you as always by the GSMC Sports Network. Hope you guys enjoy that first segment. I think Shador has a bright future ahead of him. But before we get into our second segment of today's show, I do want to remind you yet again that if you do feel so inclined, please consider leaving a tip or donation at the link gsmc.cloud. It's a huge support to both me, my fellow podcasters, and ultimately the network as a whole. This whole screen will change in the future. As I like said, I'll be transitioning to more live shows and more live content. So this will definitely change. But for now, gsmc.cloud is the place to go for any tips and donations of the sort. Now let's jump right, without further ado, into our second segment of today's show. And I truly love this young man from Utah. One of the great stories in all of college football, back-to-back Pac-12 titles in his career, truly vanquishing the Giants in the Pac-12, moving to the Big 12, much like Shudder Sanders, but coming back from a very harrowing injury. This young man truly defines moxie and strength in a quarterback. He might not have as successful a career or as bright a career as Shador Sanders, but he truly epitomizes college football to the T. And without further ado, let's jump right into the fantasy football player profile of Mr. Cam Rising. Now, college quarterbacks always fall under some sort of category that defines them whether it be an established veteran, a journeyman, a breakout star, a true freshman with heavy expectations on their shoulders, there's always some way that we choose to pin down college football quarterbacks. Promise, agility, dual threat ability, excitability. But rarely do we hear the word moxie in a college football quarterback, and that's what Cam Rising resembles to me. He represents someone who has stuck around for many years, never chose to quit, whether it be all the injuries that have piled up in his career that have really kind of dragged him into the abyss. He always rises like a phoenix from the ashes. And Cam Rising is always a very exciting young man to talk about because of what he's done in the Pac-12, where it became so crowded, and now moving to the Big 12, where he's looking to ride off into the sunset with a Big 12 championship and his first ever CFP appearance. Like I said, the last time he did play, though, and this is a big concern if you're not someone who's keen on picking up players who are injury-prone in fantasy, was 2022. Last year, he missed the entirety of the season due to a knee injury, but he's back and fully healthy. Also returning with him is his value tight end, Brant Keithy, who's looking to be one of the best tight ends in all of college football. In 2022, he he passed for over 3,000 yards, 22 TDs, 8 interceptions. His best performance, though, in 2022, should very much appeal to you. It was against USC, where many games he's played against USC always brings out his best for them. 50 fantasy points, 30 for 44 passing, 415 yards, 2 TDs, 60 rush yards for 3 TDs for Mr. Cam Rising. I completely remember those games where Cam Rising just dug down deep and really outdueled one of the one of the great rookie quarterbacks right now, Caleb Williams. And I really believe that this guy shines. And when I think about Utah, what they did, and how they built a Ram Cam Rising, they didn't necessarily focus on players who were high profile. They focused on a well rounded and balanced unit because when I think about Cam Rising, he's one of those guys who's not a traits QB. He's not a guy who's going to pop out to you in certain areas like, oh, he can fit the ball into tight windows. He's very accurate. He can read short to intermediate routes. He has a beautiful deep ball. He adds verticality to an offense. No. Cam Rising is just a solid player. And it's very rare to find someone who just fits so well into an offensive system, mainly without really standing out in one department. But Cam Rising, as soon as he came to Utah, he just fits so well within himself, the system, and what Kai Winningham, his coach, expected of him. And that's how he became someone who I believe should be seen as more of a star and should not be undervalued in fantasy as well. Like I said, Brent Keithy is a returning weapon for him. But then they added an interesting prospect, Dorian Singer out of USC, 
trying to find his way in college football. Maybe USC was not for him. It's certainly a very high volume environment with a pressure cooker situation coming in. 289 yards, three TDs. Last year he was actually at Arizona and he played with Tatiroa McMillan and he had over 1,105 yards and six TDs there. So as you can see, he's been around the block, very experienced receiver for Mr. Cam Rising. And then you add all these players who had a depth over the years for you, Tom Micah Pittman, Money Parks, Manier McLean, and all of these guys truly represent players who buy into what Cam Rising is. That's what we want out of a quarterback. He doesn't necessarily have to be the best. He doesn't necessarily have to be flashy while doing it. He doesn't have to be cocky. He doesn't have to be overconfident. He can be a guy who, at the end of the day, just gets the job done and does it well. Now let's talk about him transitioning to the Big 12. Because immediately, a lot of people realized that Utah would immediately become a contender due to the profile Cam Rising brings, what he's done in the Pac-12. But I don't think they realize exactly how much Cam Rising means. Think about it. This is probably Cam Rising's last year. In fact, it certainly is. When I think about Cam Rising, when I think about the Utah program, it would be very beneficial if Utah didn't win the Big 12, and I'll explain this later. But Cam Rising just brings an energy that we haven't seen since guys like Sam Allinger was playing for Texas. Like, maybe even Baker Mayfield and his kind of profile. That's what I, the, the Big 12 should like about Cam Rising coming to their league. Now, here's why I don't think they would want Utah to win the Big 12, right? Because for many years, all these programs like Kansas State, Oklahoma State... Iowa State have been waiting for the moment when they could say they're the top dogs. And for now, all of these Pac-12 teams coming to the Big 12, it really kind of adds that seed of doubt. Because you don't want teams like Colorado, say, to mess up your fun. You want to really establish your dominance if you're a team like Kansas State, OK State, what have you. Now that Utah, and even Arizona for that matter, come into this league, you have to be scared about the propositions they bring with them. Because Utah now has more leverage than ever by being in the Big 12. This was a very shrewd move. If anyone won this move to the Big 12 or move out of the Pac-12, I believe it's Utah. Because out of all those teams, even though they went back-to-back Pac-12 titles, I really think... They were so caught up in the allure of what the Pac-12 bought. And then they kind of got tossed to the wayside when Cam Rising got injured. But now he's back. And he's in a new look conference. And this is his final year in college football. I think a lot of teams really need to focus on making sure that Utah doesn't win. Because if Utah wins the Big 12, it would mean so much for this program. And it would be a huge advantage for them recruiting-wise and in the future because when Cam Rising leaves, a lot of kids coming into the ranks will be inspired by him. And Utah right now, in the Pac-12, realized that they need to get the best out of Cam Rising to prove that they are a destination spot. And so, thinking about Utah, I think about a team that is rife with opportunity for its future. That being said, I do think in order to really kind of do anything with it, they have to beat the Kansas States and OK States. They have to at least get to the Big 12 championship game, if not win it, to kind of gain that respect. Because they don't have much tar- of a target on their back in many teams. I think the media likes them, but... They don't necessarily have this aura about them that they're this really unbeatable squad that can't be taken down a peg and they're a god-tier level team. No. I think that the media will key in on the interesting storylines, which would also lead to Utah's benefit. 
If I'm Cam Rising, I never want to get caught up in the swarms of media trying to knock me down or lift me up. No matter what, if I'm Cam Rising, I'm just going out and performing like I did in the Pac-12. I'm going out and proving that this move to the Big 12 should vault Utah football into the national spotlight, get it a lot more attention, give it leverage in recruiting, and most importantly, leave an indelible mark in my final year in college football as someone who, against all odds, built a college football career to be fantastically proud of. He's beaten so many different guys throughout his career. He's played against so many guys who are now in the NFL and played them tough. You can't say that about many quarterbacks in college football right now. You can't say that players have had to go through the similar gauntlet as Cam Rising. And I think he's better for it for coming out on the other side, looking at his final year in college football as an opportunity for his team and his stature to fully rise. I don't think that he's going to be a top 2025 20, prospect by any means necessary, but he certainly brings to any team a quality of never giving up. And that's what I love about Cam Rising and his story, and he has the stats to prove it as well. So in fantasy college football, you might want to ride out into the sunset with Cam Rising yourself and do yourself a favor and pick him up because he's not going to disappoint and he's in a conference where a lot of opportunity is arising for him to truly make a name for himself and cement Utah as that program of the future. Well, just about do it for this segment of today's show. Coming up next, we transition to the Big Ten and some running backs. A guy who had a breakout campaign at Ole Miss, now transferring to Ohio State, making that team even more dangerous. We'll be right back after this short break. Looking for your daily fix of 